Sitting in a church service where it was so hot that you noticed the people around you fainting. This is the situation that Lowry Adventist College is trying to solve. This 108-year-old school in South India has taken a holistic approach to education. We have a daily session of prayers with them. We have counseling with them. We also uh, study sometimes their family needs and if there's someone who's sick in the house, we have special prayers for them. Most of the time we study the Bible with them because they have a lot of questions in the scriptures. And so that is what we cater to. Teachers are so helpful to discuss what we have to do in our life, in a Christian life. 
that helps me so much to develop my character, to develop my everything in my academic way. There are 2,156 students enrolled in Lowry Adventist College this year. The college has been using an old auditorium as their meeting place for almost 60 years. They hold prayer meetings, chapel, and Sabbath worship services here. In this same building, Lowry Memorial English Church conducts their services. Students from a variety of religious backgrounds exercise leadership skills by participating in church programs. They don't know about Jesus. They don't know about the Adventist lifestyle or anything. But we don't push them away. We include them and then we teach them. We show them about the love of Jesus. And because of that, a lot of the students have uh, had a positive experience at Lowry. The reason why that shows this college is because it is providing us the Sabbath off. And at the same time, it's providing the spiritual good that we needed in our day-to-day -day life. The students bring a lot of energy to everything they do, and it's felt beyond the campus. Our church members are very passionate. They don't want to just limit themselves to the church. They want to do something outside the church, and they bring more souls into the church. This college has helped me in spiritual by involving me into activities as AYs and visiting people, going to like orphanages and praying for them and bringing them uh, and bringing them the knowledge about Christ. More than 650 people crowd into this space on Sabbath. Apart from being too small for all students to come together for worship, this old building is gradually deteriorating and posing risks to the students. But in summer it gets too hot where our equipments fail to function sometimes and we have students who faint and our air conditioning systems and fan systems are not good enough because of the roof that we have, the tin roof that we have. And not just the heat, when it rains, it leaks, uh, damages our furniture, and we have uh, mold and fungus growing around. So it is our prayer that we would like to have a dedicated church that will help our children to learn and to study the Word of God, sing praises. They'll be drawn closer to the foot of the cross. And uh, it is our desire so that that church becomes a big blessing on this campus. Please pray for the students and faculty at Lowry Adventist College. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help build them a new church on campus. Thank you for giving generously to provide them with this much needed facility. Reviving Hope, March 15th through the 16th, here at South Park. Story of 
Jesus right on my heart every word tell me the story most precious sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him writhing in anguish and pain tell of the grave where they laid him tell how he liveth again love in that story so tender Let me weep while you whisper Love paid the ransom for me Tell me the story of Jesus Right on my heart Every word Tell me the story Most precious Sweetest That ever Was Good morning, good morning, Sabbath School. Isn't it a pleasure to be here? How about those temperatures out there? 70 degrees. I didn't. I had one thing in mind that I was going to wear today. I looked at the temp and it said 70. I said, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. We're going to talk today about blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So let us just have a word of prayer before we begin. Father, we are so grateful to be in your house of worship one more time. We thank you for this opportunity. Now bless and keep us, Lord, you said, where one or two are gathered. There you are in the midst. Thank you for joining us. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a passage here. Let, let's start with our memory verse. I, I, I always have loved this verse. And it says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. That, that's a wonderful verse to know that he has become the chief cornerstone. Now, what does that say for us? Are we being rejected? Yes, we are. We're being rejected as Adventists. People don't take, my kids were brought up in, the, in Adventism. But where are they? In the Sunday churches, my son is. But what I'm trying to say is, They've rejected us. They reject. Let's let me say that. Let me let me bring that around to home. They've rejected the Sabbath day because they, you know, his pastor is a great minister and a speaker, and there are things that I can glean from his messages. They're just not on the right day. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief 
cornerstone. Now, this is an interactive Sabbath school. I want you to just jump in there. If you have a comment or you have a question, come on with it. Bring it. Yes, ma'am. And the purpose of it. Have, if you look at this building, what's the cornerstone on this building? Where does the cornerstone go? On the corner? Okay, now, now uh, sister, Cece, you raised the question of what's the purpose? Okay, tell her what's the purpose of it. The cornerstone is to build a firm foundation. Yes. You've got to have a firm foundation. If it doesn't yes. have a firm foundation, it will collapse. It will That's collapse. That's why God is our cornerstone. Yes. He's our support system. Yes. We can't stand on our own. No. But when we trust and believe and love him with all our heart mm -hmm. and Anything. Because he is our support system. And he is our, where is he in terms of a cornerstone in us, where is that? In our at heart. Heart. At heart. In our heart. In our mind. Yes, ma'am. Did we hear all that? Mm -hmm. The reason I asked that because uh, my house had to be stabilized. Mm -hmm. And they came in there, they were telling me what hold the house, held the house up, what you cannot bother without the whole thing crumbling. Uh -huh. it, it, isn't that wonderful that we, it, got, a, 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 we got a cornerstone, we got a cornerstone that never crumbles? That never crumbles. <laughs> never. Isn't that awesome? That's why I love this verse. And that's why I said they have rejected us. Yes. But just as they rejected Christ, he did become the chief cornerstone. Now, let's look at uh, Psalms. We're going to talk about the Good Shepherd. But before we go there, let me just read this paragraph in today's lesson. And it says, the topics revealed in the Psalms includes Christ's deity, his sonship, his obedience, his zeal for God's temple, his identity as the good shepherd, his betrayal, his suffering, his bones not being broken, his death, resurrection, ascension, priesthood, and kingship. It's all there as predicted many centuries before. Listen to that. Before Christ came in the flesh. This was written by inspired men. This was written about what was going to happen to the chief cornerstone. Let's go to Sunday's lesson, the Good Shepherd. Divine self-sacrificing shepherd. Now, let me just ask you this. How, how many, since, 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 um, since pastor, you are our shepherd, would you give your life for me? Shepherd, but listen. But if even if you're the under shepherd, you are the um, not the literary shepherd, but you are the the figurative shepherd for the church. Is that not for right? the church? So so, 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 so we are in figurally your sheep. Right? Your sheep. Yes. Supposed to be there for 
you she. Auntie, hey, I'm going to be there for my sheep now. I'm not talking about you. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm just Just, just in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general. Yes, yes. And, and, and that was, see, see, Jesus Christ was self-sacrifice. Yes. He sacrificed all. Can you imagine having what Jesus had? Just, just use that imagination a little bit. Just think about what all Jesus had, and he laid it all down. I can't imagine it. He laid it all. He laid it all down. As a matter of fact, he didn't come here as a grown man. Mm -mm. He came here as a baby in a stable. To understand us. To understand us. What a God we serve. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. And the good shepherd. Because the good shepherd right. yes. is not a sheep. He's a sheep. I mean, he's, he's the full shepherd. Yes. He came and became a sheep. Yes. But he got victory. Yes. And so now he's a shepherd over the sheep. Yes. Oh. Uh, so that's the difference. And hallelujah. And sometimes members put so much stock in their pastors. Mm. Sometimes pastors let them down. Yes. Have mercy, have mercy, mercy. My job as the under shepherd is to keep pointing you to the good, good shepherd. All right then, yes sir, yes sir. That brings us to this this paragraph in the lesson, and it says the image of the Lord as shepherd and God's people as the sheep of His pasture highlights God's guidance and sustaining care of His people and the people's dependence on God to meet all their needs. The image conveys the notion of closeness between God and his people because shepherds, notice this, the shepherds lived yeah. with their flocks yeah. and cared for each individually. Yeah. Yes. How about that? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Just the way our good shepherd knows us. Does he not live with us? Yes. Does he not live within us? Yes. Our bodies are the temple, and he resides there. It's supposed to be. You know, we went to a place, uh, Greece, actually, and uh, they had uh, a shepherd. You know, we saw a shepherd with his sheep, and the mm -hmm. shepherd say, said that the sheep even knew his voice. Okay. Yes. I mean, and he knew a lot about each sheep. Yes. Like, just tell me. Do we know God's here. voice? Because, see, we hear a lot of voices. But here's a distinction. Here's a distinction. There are some voices that tell you do something you ain't got no business oh, doing. That ain't but Jesus. He would never soul. do that. Mm -mm. He exactly. guides you in your prayers. He guides you in your thoughts. When you ask God for his help, he will answer you. Yes. You just have to be still and listen. Yes. And he gives you the distinction of him mm -hmm. and those. And he is not those. <laughs> Thank you. He is not. My voice. Yes. If you belong to him, yes. then you recognize his voice. You recognize his yeah. voice. You recognize. Yes, ma'am. You can see and know. And know. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. Praise him. Praise him. That's all we have to do is be still. When he came to Moses, I mean, um, with the burning bush, he didn't come with a loud voice. The still small voice. And you'll notice now, I know that even though there are voices here, voices there, mm -hmm. uh, do this, do that, don't do that, do this, do that, but I still hear that still small voice. It's a different sound, it's, it's a different voice, it's a different message. Yes. Yes, you can feel the love of Christ in that message. Kings were considered shepherds of their people. Yet only God truly deserves this title because human kings 
did not live up to such a calling, just as Pastor just said. Only Jesus did, which is why he is called the good shepherd. The good shepherd. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> but but, but here's, here's the thing. Notice he's the good shepherd, but he became the lamb. Yeah. 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 Won't that preach? Yeah. And when John saw him come, he said, Behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He's the shepherd who became the lamb. Oh, mercy. I, I'm, I'm going to let that go right okay, now. Okay, all right. We're going to roll on with that one. Yeah. But that's a thought for next week, people. Jesus became the lamb, Woo. the sacrificial lamb for us. And you know, that, thinks, that, that, that just makes my mind go back to when he left the 99 and he went to find that lost sheep. I was that lost sheep, people. He left that 99 and he came and got me. I just thank him and I praise him every day for being long-suffering and dealing with me in my foolishness. But he came and got me and restored me. Hallelujah to him. Let's move to the suffering Messiah. Let's look at uh, Psalms 21. Uh, I mean, Psalms 22, 1. Does anybody have that? Uh-huh. All right. When when you hear that, where do you see the details of this Psalms fulfilled in Jesus' life? When did he say those words? Oh, On the cross. Yet this was written before he went to the cross. Prophecy. Prophecy. Yes. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now let's look at Psalms 118.22. 118.22. It's on the screen. That's the key to this lesson. That's the key. The stone which the builders refused has become the head cornerstone. Let's look at Matthew 21, 42. This is just showing how all of this was in. And it says, Jesus said unto them, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, that's in Matthew. Yeah. You just heard about it in Matthew. But you heard about it in Psalms. Yeah. Read, and preach from, read and preach from Psalms. Yes. Yeah. yes. And this is just showing us that it's in all of the Gospels, all of the synoptic Gospels, the three uh, synoptic Gospels. We're going to move right quickly here. I want to uh, touch on each day. All right, let's move to uh, Wednesday. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but I want, to, uh, I want to get in all my days here. Let's move to Wednesday. And my question is, why did the people quote Psalms 118.26 during the triumphal entry of Jesus in, into Jerusalem. Give me uh, Psalms 118.26. Anybody have it? Uh huh. Yeah, you're right. I'm. I'm just. But why did the people quote this 
during Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. Because, Sister Cece, you said it. Uh, no, I, I, I was going to say that the people were saying that because they were ready to crown him king. Yeah, they were ready to crown him king. Yes. They were ready to crown him king. They were waiting. Uh, and because they were waiting for the Messiah. Yes. Yeah, but, but they were saying it then, but they turned around a little later and uh, said, <laughs> Cruci I mean, Crucify yeah. him. Their expectations were not met according to Jesus. That's right. Yes. Yes. And their it's expectations the, was they were looking for an earthly king. king. Yes, for earthly yeah. king. Yeah, they were for earthly king. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and that, that it, it just shows that these people didn't know anything about this, but it was written before their time. But they came around and said it when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. They didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Their expectations was just not right. Yes. He was coming to save, but they thought he was coming to save them physically. Yes. And take over so Rome, and he would become king of earth. Yes. Now remember the people who are saying, uh, saying these words are people who had access to the prophecy. Yes. They knew it, but but they got they got their their, their earthly expectations mixed up with their spiritual expectations, and they don't go and, and, and they don't go together. <laughs> And, and, and that's, that's and for that reason that when Jesus showed up, they didn't even recognize who he was. He came to his own in his own. And, and did not recognize him. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way it is with the yes. He comes to us, and we don't recognize him. Be you know why? We haven't established that personal relationship with the Lord. You know, I was brought up in an Adventist home. My parents taught me from, the, from Genesis to Revelation. But the one thing they did not teach me is that I had to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Me knowing it meant nothing. Not until I developed that personal relationship with the Lord, then and only then, could I be about my father's business? But you know, you know, the Israelites did like we do. We take part of that. They, they, they referred back to the Old Testament, <laughs> but they got the part they wanted to. Yes. Way back then, Daniel tells you about you okay. have an everlasting king. Okay, but do we do that today? Yes. Not only us, but other churches too. Everybody. I, I have been to funerals and and, and the person is laying right there in the casket, and they put him in heaven. And they say that mother's up there looking down at us. Uh, to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord, to be present with the Lord. That's what I hear at every funeral. That's the part they use. But the person is laying there in the casket. Don't tell us. <laughs> Don't tell people that they are in heaven. The Bible says the dead know nothing. And, 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 and if they're in heaven and everybody that dies go to heaven, why would the Lord come back? That's right. Amen. No need. No need. But the Bible says we want to be ready so that we can do what? We can rise in the first, first resurrection. resurrection. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be there. Yes. I'm going to be there by any means necessary. Now listen, I, I want us to look at this verse. I want us to look at, because here again is another mis, misquote. Let's look at Luke Uh, it says, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now, let me, let me just get a little technical here. Put that back up for me. I, I just want to give y'all a little, let me teach a little bit too right here. You see where that comma is? 
When you read that, it says, Surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It seems as though Jesus is going to paradise that day while he's hanging on the cross. That's a misconception. That comma should be after today. So that it reads, Assuredly I say to you, today, while I'm hanging on this cross, he made him that promise, you will be with me in paradise. Today, when we read this message, when we read the Bible, be aware. Pray, yes, pray first so that the Holy Spirit gives you discernment, gives you enlightenment, empowers your spiritual mind so that you read these verses correctly. Philippians 6 and 9, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Here a little. When, when, the, when you read all of the, 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 the uh, scriptures, you know that the, the comma is misplaced because Jesus himself did not go to paradise. No, he was hanging when, on the cross. Yeah, but I mean, even, even when he was resurrected and the, and the ladies wanted to touch him, he said, touch me not. Because I am not yet, not yet. ascended to my father. Oh. That's right. So he had he didn't go to his father until after he was resurrected. Yes. So he yes. couldn't have been he couldn't have went to paradise with the thief that day. Yeah. Because he didn't go until he didn't go to his father until Yes, after yes. And I wanted to I just really wanted to bring that out. Mm -hmm. I also want to read this about I've got about eight more minutes. I have always thought that Jesus Christ was Melchizedek. Mm. This is why we are admonished to steady, to steady the word of God. And when you study the word of God, you don't just sit there with, with your, just your Bible. You got to have other books that are going to help you translate what God is telling you with the power of the Holy Spirit now. Don't let us, uh, he has to be there so that you see and you read and you understand what you're reading. But Sister White said this, it was the work of Christ to present the truth in the framework of the gospel and, and to reveal the precepts and principles that he had given to fallen man. Every idea he presented was his own. He needed not to borrow thoughts from any, for he was the originator of all truth. He could present the ideas of prophets and philosophers and preserve his originality. For all wisdom was his. He was the source, the fountain of all truth. He was in advance of all, and by his teaching, he became the spiritual leader for all ages. That means us as well. It was Christ that spoke through Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. Melchizedek was not Christ, but he was the voice of God in the world, the representative of the Father. This is why it says the order of Melchizedek. This was an order of priest. The, that would be the, the order of the Levitical priest. But Melchizedek was not Christ. And that, that just blew my mind. I said, I, I just got to read this to everybody, because if they're thinking like I'm thinking, I've been thinking that Jesus Christ was Melchizedek all this time. No, he's not. He is from the order of priest. He is the head priest. He is our chief cornerstone. Does anybody else have anything else they want to contribute? Christ says in the end, 
Christ will have absolute victory over his enemies. To make the enemies a footstool is an image that reflects the custom of the ancient Near Eastern, Near Eastern kings to place their feet on the necks of their defeated enemies to demonstrate total dominance over them. Yet, Christ's rod is not a tool of terror. He doesn't terrorize us. One graphic depiction of Christ's unlimited, ultimate victory is found in the pre-advent scene in Daniel 7, which shows that after judgment is given in favor of the saints of the Most High, his kingdom is established and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom because of the cross, the promise of the kingdom is assured. I can't wait to see him coming. I can't wait to hear the hoofs uh, running, coming down through the clouds. I can't wait until I see the so small cloud the size of a man's hand. And as it gets closer to us, I know that my king has arrived. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this time in studying and speaking on your word. Thank you for being here in the midst of us. We just love you, Lord. Now take us to the next phase of this worship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sister, Brother Irvin Mosley, it is so good to see you, my brother. Yes. Oh, Sabbath school. Reviving Hope, March 15th through the 16th, here at South Park. Jesus, 
kids free sing out to you she would definitely be an iron chef. And there's recipes that she mastered. And today we're going to talk about the recipe for a good home. Everybody wants a good home, amen? We want a good home environment, good home atmosphere. So here's a recipe for you, Pastor Watson. In order to have a good home, in honor of Women's History Month, you need four cups of love. You need two cups of loyalty. You need three cups of forgiveness. You need one big cup of friendship. Sister Owens, you need five teaspoons of hope. You need two tablespoons of tenderness. You need four quarts of faith. You gotta have it. And you need one big barrel of laughter. But it all gotta be mixed together in a bowl with a kitchen aid called prayer. Because with prayer, all things are possible. With prayer, you can move mountains. With prayer, more things have been wrought by prayer than anybody and anybody could imagine. So if you use this recipe, you can create a happy home. Amen? Tongue in cheek. Our affirmation of faith today shall be found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that was in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. for prayer and if you look into our society today we need prayer I was looking at the news the other day and they showed not too far from here in Bessemer seven young people were arrested for sodomizing and traumatizing and killing another young girl all of the same age when I saw it on the news, I thought I was watching a movie. I said, this can't be real. They knew each other. They grew up together. And when I read it and I watched it, I said, have mercy. I gave my man, a, a, I gave my little man a hug a little bit stronger that night when we had worship. Because you realize, let me tell you something. My parents were intent to make our house the house that my friends could come to. Because my mother wanted to know who I was around. You know what I'm saying? When things went on, my father said, oh, yeah, y'all can come to the house. My pops wanted to ride the table. Keep your eye on them. Know what they look like. Knew their names. Daddy, can I go to that house? No, you can't go to that house. Why not? I didn't meet their mom or dad. I don't know who they are. Quick. We got to be quick to do that in our environment. Our, everybody's home in this sanctuary should be a safe haven for kids. Be careful when you let them go. And no is not a four-letter word. No is not a four-letter word. It's a safe word. No may mean life. Do you understand me? So as we pray, let's pray for our young people. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for the environment that we're living in. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for the people who, who we live with. We don't know what's going on behind these four walls with all the houses we pass by. We don't know what's happening. But I know right now that young lady's mother and father got to be devastated to know that maybe one of those kids were at their kitchen table, knocked on their door to play with their daughter. If you're wanting to ask for prayer or seeking God's grace in prayer, just raise your hands. If you're able to kneel where you are, please do so. If not, please bow our heads. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, dear God, Jesus lifting up our Birmingham community and all surrounding areas here in the 205 area code. There's too much black on black crime. There's too much senseless killing and violence. And enough is enough. It's being perpetrated by youngsters who don't even pay taxes. I ask you, dear God Jesus, that you please touch the homes. Touch the households, touch the mothers, touch the fathers, touch the young people, and let them know that their lives are not their own, their bodies are not their own. Let them know that their life is of value. Let them know that their life is of, have a purpose. Let them know that it's imperative, it's important to know that they are loved that there is a goal, there's a destiny beyond this existence here. I pray to God, Jesus, that you please forgive us for all of our sins and iniquities. Forgive us for all the things we've done that have not been up to your standard, that have not been up to your purpose. I pray to God, Jesus, that you will allow us 
to be better today than we were yesterday. Transform our heart, transform our lives, transform our mind, and take us into that special place on this Sabbath day to have a more personal, intimate relationship with you. Bring us, dear God Jesus, into a communion, into a covenant relationship with you where you exist and where your word is elevated. Transform our lives into what you would have it to be and bring us to where we need to be so that we can be witnesses to our families, witnesses to our neighborhood and our communities. I pray, dear God, Jesus, that you will cover the manservant here today behind the altar. Allow us to be uplifted, not just entertained, but allow us to be inspired, admonished, corrected, but motivated to be the best version of ourselves. And in the end, I pray, dear God, Jesus, that people see the light of Christ in our hearts and in our minds and everything that we say and everything that we do. For we pray in Jesus Christ's most holy and precious name. Amen.
Our ushers will wait upon us for our morning tithes and offering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, a couple last week we had a very good church building meeting, committee meeting in Ron Pride's studio office, and we addressed a lot of issues that are coming up upon us for this year. And I'm asking you to God, asking you to please keep our church building plans and all the people who are extending their hands to help us build this property and design it in mind. Um, God's gonna bring a lot of people our way. We need to have discernment to make sure that we're working with the right individuals and they have the right motivation and heart. So please keep them in mind. Um, please do so. How was Sabbath school this morning? It was very good. It was very good. I thank God for Sister Freddie stepping in. Thank you, Sister Freddie. Um, our Sabbath school teacher was had taken sick, and I, I called on a ram in the bush. And, and she didn't change words. She said, sure. She said, this is God's work. I said, thank you, Jesus. I have opportunity this morning to teach the youth. I had fun. I was downstairs. I had fun. We have a nice youth department. I'm inviting parents, bring your kids. There's no excuse. If you want to be taught, they'll be taught downstairs at 1015. The adults, you can come upstairs and be taught by the word of God upstairs. There's no excuse for you not to hear the word of God. Amen? Amen. Please give your tithe and offerings to South Park SDA Church, P.O. Box 110475, Birmingham, Alabama, 35211. And to online giving, www.adventistgiving.org. Happy Sabbath, church. Lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything Hold me in your arms You are shelter from the storm when all my friends are gone you are right there all alone I never known a love like this before oh, I just want to say that I love you more than Shabbat 
adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Sabbath school, huh? In the book of Psalms, it talked about everything that he was going to go through. And that was wonderful, man. I tell you what, if you have not been studying those lessons, you need to get a book somewhere to study those lessons because it'll be a blessing to you. I just want to uh, make a couple of uh, announcements before we go into the Word. Um, if I can have the screen here for a minute, there it is. The next, the next slide here we want to look at is the is the uh, theme for our month those of you know that this month the NCAA is going to spend a lot of money they're gonna make a lot of money on what is called March Madness they're gonna try to crown a, a NCAA a, a basketball champion huh but, but, but while they're doing that at South Park we're gonna rejoice in the Lord and we're going to be all a part, of, a part of March gladness. Come on, say amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah, they're going to be, they're going to be clapping about slam dunks and hook shots. But I want you to know a long time ago, the world, the goat, the greatest of all time, took the ball of sin and dribbled it not only down the hill, but up a hill called Calvary slam dunked it in the net of glory and then came up with all glory in his hands we ought to be glad today that we serve a God just like that come on say amen out there amen amen so so if you've been sad don't be sad in March because we're all about March gladness somebody say amen out there amen amen and then we wanted just a couple of uh, e e events 
that we want to talk about. Uh, that you might can change it manually. But probably you want to change it manually because my clerk is in here. We, we're meeting with the church board on this coming Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. I think Sister Johnson will get that word out, those, those uh, the, the Zoom uh, a link, she'll get that out, and we'll have a, a meeting this Tuesday at, at 6 o'clock p.m. And then, and then the next slide is, you, you saw the advertisement on the 15th and 16th of, of uh, March. We'll have Joseph Hitu, who is the student evangelist from Southern Adventist University. He's going to preach Friday evening. And Friday evening, the subject is God, the mighty bridge builder. And then on Sabbath morning, he's going to conclude with the message, God, the restorer of dry bones. I'm excited about that already. And I haven't even heard the message. So let's be in prayer. Let's be in prayer about that, that weekend. It's going to be a blessing. And then that, that next slide on, on March the 23rd, uh, we're as a church family going to celebrate Holy Communion together. We want to make sure that our hearts are purged. We want to make sure that our hearts are right. So you have a couple of weeks to make things right. You know, you've been walking by somebody, you've been speaking to them. Make sure you get that right. Come on, say amen out there. There ain't no sense of coming to the, to the table of the Lord and eating and drinking unworthily unto yourself. We want to make sure that this is a beautiful service. A beautiful service. And I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to talking about uh, the blood on that particular Sabbath. That's going to be a blessing. Our plans are on, on March the 30th, the last Sabbath of the month. We're going to have a big, we want to have a big hitter to come in and close out the month. I'm, I'm not a big hitter, so I, I actually have a, have an engagement in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I won't be here, but we want to bring a, we got some elders who are big hitters. So we want to bring a, we want to bring a, a cleanup hitter in. A cleanup hitter in to come in and, and close out this month of March Mac gladness. And I know the Lord will bless us real, real good. Anybody ready for the word? Come on now, come on now. Y'all ready for the word? Well, let's go, let's go to the word. Let's put the scripture up so we can read it together. It's Mark 10, verses 46 through 52. And I think we can read it like a mighty army, like a, like a great choir. We can read it together. You can stand and give homage to the word of God. God's word is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We'll read it together out of the New King James Version. Uh, on the screen. Are we ready? Amen. Are we ready? Amen. Let's go to that text. Brother Pry, let's move it on. Yeah. It's verse 46. Let's read it together. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. Verse 47. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48. Be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus, come on now, and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise. He calling you and throwing aside his garment he rose and came to Jesus Verse 51 so G Jesus answered and said to him what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said to him Rabboni that I may receive my sight verse 52 and then Jesus said to him go your way your faith has made you well and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. We want to talk under the, under the subject. Under the subject we want to talk today, faith alert. Faith alert. Would you bow your heads with me? Father God in heaven, 
We're thankful, Lord, that you've come by here and you're starting this month of March gladness with this text of Scripture. I pray, O oh Lord, that you'll give me Holy Ghost unction to preach your word. And may your word go to your people without returning void. Lord, I pray that you will bathe and baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Take a, take a coal off the altar and put it on my tongue so that I can speak words of life. And Lord, I pray that you will cover me with your life, whiter than snow. Fullness of your life, then shall we know. My life of scarlet, my sin and woe. Lord, wash me and make me whiter than snow. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Faith. Faith alert. I know you are aware of the amber alert. I don't know about you, but I sometimes I'm at home and my phone goes off. A long buzz goes off. And, and that is nothing more than an amber alert taking place. The Amber Alert system began, you didn't know, in 1996 when Dallas Fort Worth, Texas broadcasters teamed with local police to develop an early warning system to help find abducted children. Amber stands for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. And it was created as a legacy to a nine-year-old little girl named Amber, Amber Hagerman, who was kidnapped while riding her bicycle in Arlington, Texas. And then she was found brutally murdered. Other states and communities soon set up their own Amber plans. And the idea was adopted across the nation. Whenever there is an Amber Alert, there are two things that are always present. Uh, as of May 1, 2022, 1,114 children were successfully recovered through the Amber Alert system. And 123 children were rescued because of wireless emergency alerts. There are 82 Amber Alert plans throughout the United States. Whenever there's an Amber Alert, you better know that there's two things that are present. Number one, someone is missing. And number two, someone is responsible. Two things that are sure. Whenever you hear that Amber Alert, you know that someone is missing and someone else is responsible. I came by here to South Park today to sound another alert because something else has gone missing. And there is somebody who was responsible. I want to declare to you today, South Park, that faith amongst the church of the living God has gone missing. Faith has gone missing. You, what do you mean, Pastor? You know, we, we, we can talk to faith. You know, church folk can show sure enough talk about faith. We can quote all kinds of scriptures concerning faith. We can close our eyes and somebody will say, Pastor, I know faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Somebody else will say, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them. that." Did. Somebody else will say, I know, Pastor, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Somebody else would say, yeah, but the just shall live by faith. We can show sure enough talk about faith. And some of us can not only quote scriptures about faith, but some of us can show sure enough sing about faith. We sing songs like, uh, my faith looks up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary. Some of us will uh, uh, praise him or get hot one Sabbath, and they'll sing, we come this far by faith, leaning on the everlasting arms. But with all of our talking and with all of our singing and with all of our profiling, I can still hear the late, great James Cleveland ask us a question. South Park, where is your faith? Why aren't mountains moving? 
Why aren't lives being transformed? Why aren't victories being won? Why are so-called Christians still lacking faith needed to turn this world upside down? Where is your faith? There is a need for a faith alert. Can we sound one today? Beep, can you hear it? A faith alert, a faith alert. Because one thing we know, something is missing, faith. And someone is responsible. Who is responsible for this abducted faith? I want to declare to you that the enemy of our soul has caused us to be distracted. He has done a bait and switch on us. He has, he, he has desires to, to get us to dilute our faith in, in lieu of what we know to be facts. I guess I want to say to you today, uh, uh, South Park is if you want to look for your faith all you got to do is look in the rubble of the facts y'all with me y'all be with me in just a minute I mean what, what, what are facts what are facts Phallic, facts are a knowledge or information based on real occurrences a fact is something demonstrated to exist or known to have existed you know, sometimes in the church, some of us who live, live in doubt because we believe that trusting is too difficult. Our lives are a wreck. Our finances are in shambles. Our families are dysfunctional, all because we will not trust God and his holy word. So we come to South Park every Sabbath. Some of us take notes. Some of us get our shout on. Some of us gather information but we leave here without being truly experiencing transformation. So we choose rather than to focus on facts, rather than to function in faith. How many times have we heard church folks say, I know what the Bible says, but... <laughs> Pastor, we live in the real world. I, I hear what you're saying, but we live in... The How many times have we heard uh, 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 Seventh-day Adventists say, I know what the word says, but have you looked at my bank statement lately? Some of us think that we have a better perspective on what is real than the word of God. We believe that the facts are stacked and, and we have been conditioned by our own self-gratification. We've been, we've been conditioned by our lack of faith and we have totally neglected what God has to say about the issue. So most of us find ourselves relying on what the, the, the newscaster says. Some of us rely more on what social media has to say rather than trusting in what God has said. We allow facts to shape our faith. But can we start, here's a shouting moment right here. We should not confront our faith with facts, but rather we should confront facts with our faith. I mean, that was one of the shouting moments right there. We should not confront our faith with facts, but rather we should confront the facts with our faith. Somebody say amen in this house. If God says it, even if we don't see it, honey, it's a fact. That's why faith is so important, because faith accepts God and what he has said as fact. I, I don't believe that the Bible contains truth. I believe that the Bible is truth. So how can we make a leap today from South Park, from facts to faith? How can we overcome our facts with our faith? Well, come, to, come with me to our text in Mark chapter 10, starting with verse number 46. And I want you to know that in verse 46, we are going to discover that, that, that there are a whole bunch of facts that are found in verse 46. First of all, the first fact in verse 46, the first fact is this man was blind. Didn't, 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 didn't the text say blind Bartimaeus? This man was blind. You need to understand that in that day, if you had some kind of physical uh, dilemma, that there was a stigma and stereotype that came with it. Understand, thinking of that day, that many believed 
that if you were blind or if you were crippled or if you were lame, two things must be true. One of two things must be true. Number one, either you sinned and committed a terrible offense or your parents sinned, but something happened to make you in this condition. So the fact is, is that this man was blind and with that comes the stigma and a ridicule that this, he, this man must be some great sinner. That's fact number one. He was blind. Y'all see that fact? Isn't that a fact in verse 46? Okay, here's the second fact. The, fact, the second fact is look at this brother's name. And some of you might not never caught, caught this, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to take you to a school of et etymology. We're going to do a word study. You ought to be able to learn something in church. Come on, say amen out there. His name, his name, his name. Bar, we're not confused by bar because bar just simply means son of. But what we need to unpack is his name, Timaeus. And when you go back to the original uh, composition of this word, Timaeus, in, in etymology, what you discover is Timaeus literally means filthy one. Oh, 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 oh. You, you, you might want to catch this because his name was son of a filthy one. The next time you want to complain about your name, think about Bartimaeus. Don't, don't, act, don't act like those folk way back then should be ashamed of themselves calling this man by this terrible name. Because the truth of the matter is we do the same thing in, at South Park in 2024. If somebody's father was rotten, we'll say to that son, you just like your daddy. You a chip off the old block. Somebody say amen out there. His name was, could you imagine their family reunions? They had to go get, they had to go get t-shirts printed up. The filthy family. The facts. He was blind. His name said that he had some issues, that he was filthy. But that wasn't all. There's a fact in this text that says this man was a beggar. This man was a beggar, which meant that he had to be diplomatic and that he had to be totally dependent on what others did for him. He couldn't have an opinion. He couldn't speak his mind. He couldn't dare challenge or disagree. He had to shut up and rely on everybody else. This man must face some hard facts. He is blind. All this is in verse 46. He is blind. He has to deal with the stereotypes and assumptions that come with that. He has this ugly family dysfunctional name, son of a filthy man. He's a beggar, which suggests that he had to please the people to get the, his needs met. But finally, with another fact, is he was an outcast. He was an outcast. Lord have mercy. Verse 46, if we stopped reading there, we would be depressed. The facts were stacked against him. When we look at this man in verse 46, we scratch our heads and wonder what is going to happen to this brother. Some of us here today at South Park are just like blind Bartimaeus. The facts are stacked against us. Some of us have bad reputations, and that's a fact. Some of us are broke, busted, and disgusted, and that's a fact. Some of us are at our wick's end. We're about to pull our hair out, and that's a fact. Some of us haven't prayed all week long, and that's a fact. But I've come by here to tell you that facts it may be a fact today, but that fact can be changed. Come on, somebody. Let, we might as well shout right now. We, we might as well shout right now. I'm trying to hold it, Doc, Doc Jenkins, but we might as well shout right now. Here it is. Your now does not have to be your always. Okay, y'all missed it. Let me y'all miss it. Let me let me say that to this side. Your now does not have to be your always. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all almost got it. This side over here, they ready. They ready. They ready. Look here. Your now does not have to be your always. Now, the ones in the middle, we're few, but we believe it, don't we? That our now does not have to be 
always. Hey, does anybody know that facts can change? Some of you are saying, no, facts are facts forever. Well, a, a, few, a few years ago, I celebrated my sweet 16. And, and, in the, and in the year of our Lord, I'm not going to tell you what year it was, but all during that year, it was a fact that I was 16. Seems like just yesterday. But do I got a witness? <laughs> that facts change. Y'all might not know it by looking at me, but I used to be a pretty good athlete. I was a bad basketball player and a better baseball player. I had, I had some pro ambitions. That was way back then. That was a fact. But does anybody know the facts change? I can't shoot a set shot, a free throw. Come on, say amen. My hips are locked. Come on, say amen out there. Don't, don't y'all laugh at me. Don't y'all laugh at me. Because y'all remember when it was tight and right. Y'all y'all, y'all y'all remember that you had a full head of hair. Come on now, you remember me and that you had the six pack. You you had the case. Come on, say amen out there. But do I have any witnesses? The facts change. I got a question for you today. I got a question for you today. And the question is. How did this blind man Bartimaeus, with all of these facts stacked against him in verse 46, how did he go from 46 to verse 52 where Jesus says, your faith has made you whole? I, I think if we sit up for just a moment, we'll find out, we'll find out what happened between 46 and 52. And what we can find out is what we can do to recover our faith in lieu of the facts. Y'all ready to go? Y'all ready to go? Yeah. Come on now, don't make me be up, up here preaching. I'm leaning on this pulpit trying to stand up. <laughs> Y'all better not have me up here leaning for nothing. Come on, say amen out there. <laughs> what happened to this man? Here it is, number one. What, what activated this man's faith? Here it is. First thing is, he heard something. Is it, it's in the text. It's in the text. The Bible says, the Bible says, that when he heard of Jesus, first part of verse 46, of verse 47, first part of 47, the Bible seems to suggest that this man received a breakthrough when Jesus was on his way out of the city. Do you, man, I, the Bible is so, let me tell you something, the Bible is so fun. If we were just pick it up and read it, it'll shout out. Have you ever wondered why Jesus waited to hook this man up coming out of the city? And why didn't Jesus hook him up going into the city? Y'all, y'all ever wonder that? Well, sit up and let me tell you what happened. What happened was Jesus said this, he knew that this man's faith needed to be built up. And he knew that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So look what Jesus did. Jesus went, the Bible says, he and his disciples went into Jericho. Right? Does, does not the Bible say that? And, and, and when they came out of Jericho, look who's with them. They're not by themselves. It's Jesus, his disciples, and a great multitude. Who is this multitude? Now, every time I stand up, I say this to y'all, and I'm going to say it until y'all believe it yourself. Whenever Jesus passes by, he never leaves you like he finds you. See, one, one Sabbath, y'all, it's going to click on y'all that Pastor Watson's been trying to tell us that all we got to do is let Jesus come by. And if Jesus comes by, he won't leave us in the same condition that he found us. Somebody say amen out there. So imagine he went into Jericho. He went into Jericho and found some folk who were lame and limp. And when Jesus came in there, by the time he left, they were leaping for joy. He went in there and found some folk who were tied to him. And when, by the fact that Jesus passed by, all of a sudden that, that, that tongue was loose to sing God's praise. 
Folk was blind just like Bartimaeus. But when Jesus passed by, not only did they have 2020, but they had 1620. Now, now for some, some, some of y'all, that went over y'all head. But that means they had perfect vision. They came out being able to read those small letters on the wall. Come on, say amen out there. And so the Bible says that when they came out of the city, Bartimaeus heard something. I wonder what he heard. He, he, he probably should have heard the same thing that we ought to hear at South Park. When people come to South Park, they ought to hear somebody exclaiming and testifying to the goodness of God. Bartimaeus must have heard somebody skipping out of there saying, there is no secret what God can do, what he did for me, he can do for you. Bartimaeus heard somebody singing, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but, but, but Jesus set me free. Jesus, 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 come on, say amen out there. He must have heard somebody come out singing a song that he loved to hear. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind. Bartimaeus heard that. Somebody, when we come to South Park on Sabbath, we ought to come with a testimony burning in our hearts. Because there's a Bartimaeus somewhere in the congregation who needs to be encouraged by what God has done for you. How dare we sit on what God has done for us? How dare we not lift up our voice like a trumpet and tell somebody about what Jesus done for me? I was lost without hope. I was up the creek without a paddle. I, look here, I was so far down low that you couldn't even find me, but I'm so glad that Jesus came by. And all I know is that I've heard a joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. He saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. That's all of us. Somebody say amen out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in the text, y'all. It's in the text. You want to know what happened to him between verse 46 and verse 52? Well, we'll hear your testimony a little later. Wait, 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 wait. Let's do it at the end, at the end of my sermon. Because I'm hot now. I'm hot. I'm going to let, I'm gonna let you, I got you hot. Don't worry about it. I'm going to let you testify. I'm going to let you testify, but let's do it on the end. Because there's some more good stuff that's probably going to be added to your testimony. All right, God, just, just, just be seated. I see, uh, all right, I see you getting happy over there. I'm happy with you. I'm happy with you now. I'm happy with you. She, she, look at her. She's ready to go. Look. She, she's doing what I've been trying to tell y'all y'all ought to be doing. It's like fire shut up in the bones. Somebody say amen out there. Amen, amen. Wait, wait, wait. He heard something. He heard something. Isn't that in the text? But watch this. Number two, the Bible says that he heard that Jesus of Nazareth came by. That's the first part of verse 47. But then after he heard something, watch this, y'all. Here it is. He said something. I don't know what I got to do. I come here with this word, boy. Y'all ought to be climbing off these. Y'all ought to be swinging off these chandeliers. Y'all know this word is good. Y'all know it's good. So, so let me see. Let me test you, see if you see if you have something to shout about. Don't worry about it. If your hats fall off, we'll pick it up and put it back on. Look at we 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 ain't worry about sweating out our weave or nothing else today. We, come on, somebody say amen out there. So some, of, some of us have put black dye out here so we, so we can look young. Don't worry about it. If the black stuff starts running down, it's all right. Come on, say amen. Here it is. He said something. He said something. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And he began. Y'all see that? And he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We might as well get to the shop right now. We might as well get to it right now. Here it is. You can't let your shortcomings make you come up short. I'm going to read that one more and again. You can't let your shortcomings make you come up short. Bartimaeus couldn't see, but he can talk. 
Okay, y'all need a little help. Let me give you something else to shout about. Man, go start the car, man. We got to get out of here. These folks, these folks ain't enjoying this word. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all, y'all, if y'all like that one, y'all to like this one. You got to use what you got left to get what you don't have. Man, can I borrow that jacket you got on, boy? You, you clean as a whistle back there. Yes, sir. That brother clean as a Come on now. Come on now. You got to use what you got left to get what you don't have. Bartimaeus could have waddled around in the fact that he was blind. But no, the Bible says he began to use what he had. He opened up his mouth. Sometimes we don't understand that God always leaves us with enough to get what we need. We need to stop belly aching. We need to stop complaining. We, we need to stop complaining about what we don't have. We need to stop trying to get folk to feel sorry for us and throw pity parties for us. God has made an investment in our little bit so that the same little bit can become the spring forward to get what we need. Somebody say amen out there. Amen. A- April, every Sabbath, when I come, God bless April. I don't, I don't want to tell on April. She was speeding in the parking lot, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She, she was speeding in the parking lot. But one thing I love about April and, and, and my brother that's out in the parking lot, they always make sure that this little, this little man who needs a hip replacement can, 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 can get where he needs to get. She comes down and she gets my backpack. Somebody say amen out there. And she, bring, and she brings it up here and puts it right here on the spot. Come on, y'all give April amen out there. I, I want to see, see the rest of y'all here next Sabbath so, so that y'all can help me up them stairs. Come on, say amen. And I, what I'm trying to say to you, I don't let this hip pain stop me. Because my hips may be bad, but I can open up my mouth. Come on, say amen out there. Give me something to hold on to. And I'll, I'll lift up my voice like a trumpet. And I'll tell a dying world that Jesus can save. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that made me white as snow. There's no other fount I know. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody say amen out there. Don't do nothing to stop you. Don't you let a little arthritis and, and rheumatism stop you? Don't be talking about I ain't got no gas to go to church. No, don't let that stop you. Our problem is we let too much stuff stop us. And we're missing out what God has in store for us. He has a blessing waiting for us, but he wants to know, are you going to press your way through? This man couldn't see. But he sure enough can talk. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now look here. While he was shouting for his breakthrough, church folk got a little nervous. I can see him right now in my mind's eye. Somebody from South Park. Scoot, scoot, scooted up next to the man. So, so now, now, now look here. It's all right. We'll let you get by with one shot. Because I understand you're going through something. You, you need to get it out of you. And because of what you're going through, we'll give you an extra shout. But three shouts, and you out. 
We got to call a meeting. The brethren have to come together. And we got to make a decision about this brother who keeps on shouting. But you know about what I love about Bartimaeus in this text? Bartimaeus was not wrapped up into the politics of the church. He was not wrapped up in, in what, 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 what the proper protocol is. See, when you're down low enough, when, when, when you are desperate enough, you don't care nothing about what the manual says. Somebody say amen out there. Don't be telling me what some laws or robber rules and orders say. When you're down low enough, and the Bible says he began to shout even the more. They told him to shut up. And Bartimaeus started thinking about that thing. He said, I'm blind. And here folk who are seeing, telling my blind self to shut up. They got their sight. I don't have mine. I can either listen to them and stay blind. Or I can get I, I can keep moving on in faith until I get by Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. And I, I know, look, look, I know, look at look at I, I grew up, I grew up in this church. And I heard Dr. Jenkins testifying how her family raised her, you know, on the word of God. But, but the missing link was nobody told me that I got to have a personal relationship with myself. Huh? So I grew up in the church and I got disgusted with the church. It wasn't the church's fault. It was my fault. Because I, I thought it was greener on the other side. So I went out there and did my thing. Come on, say amen out there out there and I found out that it wasn't greener on the other side. And Jesus' grace and mercy, come on somebody, his grace and mercy allowed me to come back to him. I came back to him running because I know I needed it. All the people I was hanging out with, Brother McKnight, Ellen McKnight, all the people I used to hang out with are either in, are dead or in jail. But God saved me in the privacy of my own room. It wasn't in a church service. That's why I know that Jesus will make house calls. Come on, say amen out there. Even in the prophecy of my room, something whispered sweet something in my ear and said, man, you better give your life to me before it's everlasting too late. Somebody say amen out there. And I gave my life to the Lord. You talking about somebody who was on fire? Man, I'm, you know, I, I was one of those that was so on fire, I would come down and sit on the first row. I was hot for Jesus. But, but there was another thing I didn't quite have straight. And that is, is that everybody's not going to celebrate. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. Everybody's not going to be happy about your newfound relationship. And so people start whispering. People start talking about you. You know, and I, I'll be honest with you. Let me just be honest with you. I let, I let that stuff get to me. I start moving from the first pew back to the middle, next thing you know I was in the back, and the next thing you know I was back in the streets again. Because I was worried about what other people said. But then I had a Bartimaeus moment. And the Lord said, look here, there ain't nobody in that church who went to Calvary for you. Ain't nobody in this church paid the price for your sins. So I want you to turn around and I want you to get back in that church and I want you to not look to the left or to the right. I want you to look up. Come on, say amen. Because my redemption draws nigh. And so now I'm at a point where I don't care what nobody says. You can frown like a clown. You can be upset. You can squint. You can be all mad. Your, 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 your jaws can poke all up and your, your eyes can get bucked. I don't care. Somebody say amen out there. I'm on my way to the Canaan land. Ah, somebody say amen out there. I'm going my way to the place where we can feast on milk and honey, where we can shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen, where we can sing and never get tired. Somebody say amen out there. So I, I know what Bartimaeus was going through in this text. Bartimaeus said, look at you, you ain't going to stop me, and you ain't going to block me. Because I didn't come to see you anyhow. I came to get close to Jesus. Come on, say amen out there. And the Bible says something 
the Bible says something that's very interesting to me. The Bible says that Jesus stood still. Jesus stopped what he was doing to see about Bartimaeus. Now, this isn't the first time I saw this Jesus standing still. The first time I, I remember is that woman who had an issue of blood. Y'all go back and read that in Mark chapter 5. Some of the same characteristics are there. Because the Bible says she has spent all that she had. Her insurance had ran out. And Obamacare didn't kick in. Come on, say amen. She was all messed up. She didn't have no more money to spend. She had, she had spent money on witch doctors and roots and all this kind of stuff. But the Bible says she grow, grew worse rather than getting better. But then if you look at that, y'all read it when you go home. In, verse five, in, in chapter 5 it says, and when she heard. And that woman got so desperate and so she said, look here, look here. Whatever Jesus is doing for these other folk, I believe he got something for me. So the Bible says she began to press her way. She, she didn't let obstacles stop her. She kept pressing. She pressed her way through. And the Bible says she got close enough. She had one more leap in her legs. She had one more reach in her arms. And, and I don't know, she must have had on some leap press on nails because, she, be, because when she, she stretched out, just, just a little nip of her finger touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says she was made whole from that very hour. But what gets me is what happened to Jesus. She touched him, and then Jesus stood still. Could y'all see it? This woman touched Jesus, and when Jesus felt that touch, oh, he said, who? She said, wait a minute. Who just did that? Who was that that just touched me? The disciple said, Jesus, you've been working too hard. You see all these folk bumping into you? What do you mean? Who touched you? She said, he said, there's a difference in betw between somebody bumping into me and somebody who's reaching out for me. He stood still. We talked about it in Sabbath school. You remember the thief on the cross? See, Jesus came to die. That was his mission. He came to die for our sins. And he was on the cross completing that mission. He was getting ready to die. I mean, the, the weight of the world's sin was on him. But then he heard somebody shout from the other cross. He deserved to be on that cross. But the man shouted, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus stood still. Looked over to that man and said, let me tell you something, bro. I'm not going to paradise right now, but this you can bang on. I'm going one day, and when I go, my, this is my promise to you, that the next time you open up your eyes, you're going to be with me in paradise. Aren't you glad he's still staying still? Faith, faith stops him. Jesus right now, y'all, y'all have been, y'all know where he is. He's in the most holy place right now. Interceding on, uh, on, on our, on behalf of us. He's interceding. But you know what? Every time somebody in South Park reaches out to him in faith, even while he's in the most holy place, he stops. Somebody just touched me. Somebody in South Park who would dare believe that Jesus is able to change their facts. Somebody say amen out there. Oh, oh, I got to go. I got to go. He heard something. He said something. But this is the last thing that he did. He did something. It's in the text. And verse 50 says, and throwing aside, it, it says, it says, it says, you can start playing something. I don't even know. I don't even know what I want you to play. Just start playing something. Because I, because I know, I know when, I know when you play, it's gonna be right. 
So, so, so you just you just find whatever you it's gonna be, whatever you play. The Holy Ghost gave it to you. Come on, say amen. He he heard something. He said something. And then he did something. Look what he did. He threw aside his garment. And he rose and came to Jesus. I don't want you to miss this. For a beggar, for a blind man, his tunic meant everything to him. His tunic was made out of his camel's hair. And it was designed so that it would keep him, keep the elements off of him. It would keep him dry when it was raining. It would keep him cool when it was hot. And it'll keep him warm when it got cold. That, that, that tunic meant everything to him. It was his security blanket. He held on to that thing for dear life. But when he heard the master calling, and I don't want y'all to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. That Jesus told the same people who were telling him to shut up. Jesus told those same people to tell the brother to come to me. Somebody say amen on here. And this man was so excited to get to Jesus. See, he was blind. But he said, I'm, 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 I'm putting all my chips to the middle of the table. I, I know y'all y'all Adventists don't understand that, putting all your chips. But he said, I'm all in. Everything I got, I'm going to put my trust in this man. He took off his garment. He arose and came to Jesus. Could I make a suggestion today? That some of us got to learn how to cast some stuff off. Some of us need to stop focusing on what the facts are saying. Or what the statistics are saying. Or what somebody's opinion about us is saying. We got to learn how to cast that stuff off and come to Jesus. I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of facts telling me what to do. I'm tired of my destiny being wrapped up in some fact. God is saying to me and God is saying to you today that our faith can overcome the facts. Yeah, don't you understand? That it's not the facts that will set you free. You need to understand the truth will set you free. The word says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What is the truth? Jesus says, let me tell you what the truth is. The truth isn't a what. The truth is a who. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except he come by me. What we need to do is stop worrying about the facts and start, and start leaning and depending on the fact changer. Somebody say amen on that. Hey, I want to end like this. I want to end like this. One of my favorite sitcoms of all time is in syndication now. But it's a, it's a, it's a story about entitled Good Times. Y'all know that story of Good Times. It, it was about a couple named Florida and James. James Evans Sr. And they were raising three children. Uh, 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 and, and their attempts to get by in a rented high-rise project apartment in a poor black neighborhood in the inner city of Chicago. And it seemed as if the facts were always stacked up against them. One of the most notable characters in this family was by a kid by the name of J.J. Y'all know J.J., don't you? J.J. was James Evans Jr. Little skinny, frail, like the wind can blow him away at any time. He always wore that hat with it flipped up. And somewhere on the, in that episode, J.J. was going to say he was kid dynamite. Huh? This reminds me, as I close, of another real-life character who was not born in Chi-Town, but he was born in a little town called Bethlehem. His initials wasn't J.J., for James Evan Jr., but if rather his initials was J.C., which stood for Jesus Christ. And J.J. didn't have power, but J.C. had dynamite power. 
one day he showed up at a wedding of Cana of Galilee. And the worst thing happened that could happen. The host ran out of wine. But J.C. came. And J.C. is never limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. And that day, J.C. stood up and changed water into wine. Why was he able to do it? Because J.C.'s got dynamite power. One day, he showed up in church, just like today. And there was a man in the congregation who had a withered hand. But J.C. is never limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. He told the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched out his hands, and his hands looked new. He looked at his feet, and his feet did too. How did J.C. do it? J.C. did it because he got dynamite power. One day, he was around a hungry crowd, but they had no food. But Jesus is never limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. They found a boy who had a few sardines and a couple of biscuits. And Jesus said, that's enough. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. And he was able that day to feed 5,000 men plus the women and the children. How did J.C. do it? He did it because he's got dynamite power. One day he met a man in the pool of Bethesda who lived with the fact of being lame and impotent for 38 years and nobody was there to help him in the water. But Jesus is not limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. He declares to that man, pick up your mat and walk out of this place. How was J.C. able to do it? He was able to do it because J.C. has dynamite power. When one day he got a word that his friend Lazarus was sick. The fact of the matter is Lazarus had died. But Jesus is not limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. And Jesus went to the open tomb, said, Lazarus, come forth. And a miracle took place. Lazarus came hopping out in his grave clothes. And he said, Jesus said, loose them and let them go. How was J.C. able to do that? He was able to do that because J.C.'s got... One day, one day, humanity was in desperate trouble. The fact is, is that we were lost without hope. We were up the creek without a paddle. But I'm so glad that Jesus is not limited by the facts. He specializes in changing the facts. He came down and, and died on a rugged cross. And on the third day, he got up with, with resurrection power in his hands. How was he able to do that, South Park? He was able to do that because J.C. has. I, I know, I know. Today, the facts are stacked up against you. All I know is that Jesus is not limited by your facts. I know that he specializes in changing the facts. How does he do it? He's got. He's got, he's got power to forgive and power to live. He's got, yeah, he's got power to heal and power to feel. He's got, he's got power to save and power to behave. He's got, he's got power to see and power to set free. He's got, he's got power to hold and power to mold. He's got, he's got power to perform and power to transform. He's got he's got power to sift and power to lift. He's got he's got power to mend and power to spin. Why? Because he's got 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 dynamite power power to encourage power to change power to deliver, power to provide. Whatever you need, he's got it because J.C.'s got Woo! He's got dynamite power. You believe that? I don't know what facts are riding your back today. I don't know what facts are riding your back today. But all I know is J.C. 
has power to change your facts. Somebody's family is catching hell on both sides. And the devil's trying to get your family to dissolve. I want to give you a message today, family, that he's got dynamite power. Somebody got a diagnosis from the doctor, and it's not good. You don't even want to share it with your church members because it's so, the news was so bad. I don't know. All I know is JC has the power to change those facts because he's got dynamite power. Somebody came into church house discouraged. Somebody came into church house with their head bent down, not knowing how they were going to make it. Somebody right now is, is at their end, wits end, and you don't even know how you're going to come up with rent this month. You don't even know if you're going to get evicted or what. I came by here to let you know that JC still got power. He's got dynamite power. What activates that kind of power? What activates that kind of power? I'm glad you asked that question. Your faith. If you got the faith, he's got the power. Who believes that today? Who's got some stuff, some facts that are all out of whack every day? But you want to stand in faith today and say, Pastor, won't you pray for me? that my faith will stand tall in the midst of these facts. Is there somebody like that today? You, I know, I mean, everybody, we don't want to, you know, everybody know our business, but, but I believe that Jesus does special calls on the Sabbath. I believe, I believe that he makes healing calls on the Sabbath. But he's waiting for somebody to come and just activate their faith. I want to pray for you. I, I, know, I know we're streaming. I know all that good stuff, but but today, somebody needs a breakthrough. And why not can your breakthrough be today? Could you come to this altar? Could you come to this altar? I want to pray a special prayer for you. I want, I want, you, to, I want you to step out in faith. And no matter what your facts are, I want you to know that J.C. has dynamite power. Hallelujah. 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 There's going to be a breakthrough party here at South Park today. I hear the chains falling. I hear some folk getting ready to get delivered. I got some folk whose facts are about to change because JC's got, he's got dynamite power. Hallelujah. 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 My sister, come on, come on. I ain't forgot about you. Come on. I haven't forgot about you. I have not forgot about you. Come on down here. I want somebody to go tell the report that at South Park, March gladness is going on. Jesus is setting some folk free. Jesus is fixing some folks. He's fixing some folks. He's doing it just now. He's doing it just now. He's doing it just now. But we're, we're getting ready to dismiss from the screen because what we're, what we're getting ready to do and what's getting ready to happen, we, 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 we don't even need everybody to know what's going on here at South Park. Because we're not doing this for a show. We're not doing this because somebody, so somebody say, oh man, didn't he do a good job over this? No, I'm not, I don't care nothing about that. I came down this road with these bad hips. I came down this road because I'm expecting something to happen. I'm expecting something to happen. Who believes today? Who believes today? You believe? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we are so thankful and we're so grateful that you allowed messed up folk like us to come into your presence 
without being consumed, without receiving our just reward. You clearly said in your word that, that the wages of sin is death. And you also said that all have sinned and come short of his glory. So the truth is that all of us should be on a cooling board somewhere because we've sinned and come short of your glory. But that, that text says the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today, Lord, we want to we wanna be on the other side of the but. We want to say thank you for all you've done. We want to praise your holy name for who you are. But Lord, we want to pause in this prayer to ask you to clean us up with your blood. Before we ask anything of you, we want to make sure that every sin is confessed. We come to you, Lord, laying at your feet our sins of omission. Those things that we've left undone that we should have done. And at your feet we lay our sins of commission. Those things that we've done that we should have left undone. We're praising your name that you said in your word that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And you said, and your blood will cleanse us from all of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. And may the blood of Jesus have his way in this room. Now, since every sin has been confessed and every sin has been laid at your feet and you've cleaned it up, now we're asking something of you now. We're asking you to show up on the Sabbath like you did when you walked the streets of Jerusalem, when you walked the dusty streets of Bethany and Galilee. Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that you'll stop by here and that, that you won't leave us like you found us. Lord, right now, you know these people have pressed their way to this altar. I don't know what's going on, and I don't know what the facts are. But all I know is that, J.C., you have dynamite power, and that you're able to do whatever you want to do. You can flip over a diagnosis. You can, you can, you can drive out cancer, and you can, you can bring down high blood, and you can, you can raise up low blood. Lord, you're able to, to, to take somebody's bank account and make a difference, and you're able to put in some money. They don't know where it's coming from. Oh, Lord, I pray in a very special way to families that are on the rocks that you will deliver in the name of Jesus. Turn the love of the husband back to his wife and the love of his wife back to the husband and both of their love to their children. Oh, Lord, we're trusting you today. We're trusting in your dynamite power today. We're sounding a faith alert. We know what faith has been. It's been beneath the facts, but we're, we're casting away the facts today. And we're saying, Lord, we come by this far by faith, leaning on the everlasting arms. You said to that man, Bartimaeus, you said, man, what is it that, that I can do for you? You're saying to the South Park right now, these people who are at this altar, you're saying, my, my daughter, what is it that I can do for you? My son, what is it that I can do for you? And the Bible says that, 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 that Barmaeus told him, he said, he, said, he said, Rabbi, if I can only receive my sight. And watch this now. Watch this now. I believe God's word. And the Bible says, and immediately. Y'all know what immediately is? Immediately is right now. Right now, that man received what he asked God for. Because he believed that God can do it. I'm praying right now for faith at South Park. That we will believe that he can do what we need him to do. The Bible says that when God hooked him up, Bartimaeus followed him in the road. He wouldn't let Jesus get out of his sight because he was so thankful for what Jesus has done. Would you make that covenant? Would you make that, would you make that promise, Lord? If you would hook me up today, I will follow you in the road. I'll follow you every step of the way. Would you do that? What I'm saying to you, 
as the under shepherd of the great shepherd. What I'm saying to you today is your faith has made you whole. And you can start celebrating right now like it's already done. We don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout right now. They walked around the walls of Jericho and they shouted and the walls came tumbling down. I'm wondering if the people of God today would shout in belief that God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you for changing my facts. Thank you, Lord, for hooking me up. I believe we ought to take a minute or two and just lift up our voices and give God glory and give him thanks for what he's done in this house. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say what Jesus said to Bartimaeus on that day. Go thy way. Thy faith has made you whole. Go thy way. Thy faith has made you whole. Go back to your seat shouting that God has given you what you need. Hallelujah. You ready? Huh? Who's that blind man? All right. Come on. Get, bring that mic. I promise my sister. What is your name? Nakia. Nakia. Nakia just wants to tell us now. We're we, we going to. We're going we gonna, to we gonna compact it. Give, give them just what, don't give them too much because they might not be able to take it all. Okay, okay. But, but, give, but give them what, what, what they need today, all right? Okay. This is Nakia, y'all. Y'all say hello to Nakia. Nakia. I want to uh, share this with y'all. When I was 27, I was that blind man. Mm. Due from a, a bright angel. You can look that up and see what I went through. I was that blind man. I couldn't see for eight months. I was in a coma for three months mm. from that bright angel. And I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and last night I got something else to share. I was in a bad car accident with my daughter. She went, was behind the wheel and had a seizure. I was so scared, but you know what? God had us. Amen. Even though we hit a park truck. I could have went through the woman. My great baby could have went through the woman. My, my baby girl was having the seizure. That truck stopped her from hitting that pole. Mm. That was never, I'm glad to be here. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait until church this morning. Can, 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 can we shout for the kid right now? I can wait. Can we shout for the kid right now? And I got my eyesight back. I she can got, see real good. But she, she can ooh, see real good. It, it, it because, was rough. Hey, hey, because he's got dynamite. dynamite power. Yeah. And he done brought me a long way. I just had a birthday. Fair weather 18. I turned 48. The so. devil, the devil, you're a young, you're a young woman. 48. Yeah, 48. Girl, I wish I could go back yeah. to 48. I, I can't yeah. even see 48 in the rearview mirror. Come on, tell you man. Yeah, but praise him while you got time. Oh, get better. Yeah. Let's give it to you, amen, everybody. Let's give it amen. I'm glad to be here, and I, and I love all of y'all. Anyway, we love you, too. God bless you. Let's give it amen, everybody. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, 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 March gladness is so good that I, don't even, I ain't going to even say a benediction. Just start playing something. You got to watch out for her. She going to play. Y'all sing that? Yeah, God. Get, get, get. Victory. Come on, say that again. Say that again. Victory is mine. Say it. I love 
call this one joy. Joy is mine. Hallelujah, joy. Joy today. Sabbath. March gladness. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go.